Um, that, that in and of itself was a beautiful journey. I could expound on it. I got my first Umrah trip in while I was there in South Africa on one of my, uh, one of my vacations. And I got to see the country as well. Mm -hmm. You know, all the vacations that were there, I traveled to different parts of the country to see it, you know, explore it and to see, like, understand the culture of the people. So not only was it studying, it was also understanding and like, kind of like, um, absorbing the culture of South mm -hmm. Africa. And then when I finished, um, the question now was, what do I do? Do I... You know, uh, just were your parents still in Canada? Or? They 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 were in Dubai by then. When I finished, they were they were both in Dubai. Okay, beautiful. Right? That's an interesting move. So though. do I go back to Dubai? But I'm not really cut out for that. I'm I'm somebody who speaks the language of North American people, mm -hmm. right? You know, what I'm saying there wouldn't be much for me to do in Dubai as as much as there would be because I'm born and bred here. Mm -hmm. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? So that could be a transition, a segue into like what am I doing here? Right? But then I also felt like I'm so young. I was 18 years old, turning 19, 18 years old when I finished the Island program. And the average age of my classmates was 26, 27. So they're mm -hmm. almost a decade older than me. Of course. Right? Most of the people who graduate. a lot of people begin to study at 17, 18. Exactly. So they start. and But then I started with my secular school. So I finished very early. I was like, you know what? These are prime years of education. I'm not probably not going to get back if I start becoming an imam right, right away. Mm -hmm. So let me go and at least study a little bit longer. And then I just, uh, I mean, there was the khusus fil hadith. A PhD in Hadith, a specialization in Hadith. I could have done that because I had a lot of interest in going through the biographies of people and you know chains mm -hmm. of narration and all that stuff. But I felt like it was more practical for me to go into fiqh mm -hmm. and jurisprudence because that's what people deal with mm -hmm. every day. Mm -hmm. And if I'm going to be somebody who serves my community, I'm, I'm going to have to have a good handle on, on fiqh. Yes. So going back to my initial fascination with law. So then I went into, uh, you know, Takhassus Fil Fiqh, which is Ifta, which is the Mufti course in essence, in Santin, South Africa. Santin is the fancy place. 60% of South Africa's wealth is confined within the 10 mile radius of Santin and Houghton, right, in Marlborough. So that, uh, it's a very wealthy, predominantly Jewish area mm -hmm. that our, uh, my teacher, Mufti Muhammad Abu Bakr Minti, who used to be a resident Mufti at Darul Mazadville, he established his own Darul Ifta over there. Interesting. Yeah, so just like Mufti Ibrahim uh, Desai has one in, in Durban, South Africa, and that's the famous askimam.com that yes. everybody goes to. <laughs> yes. Uh, he started his own thing in, in Santon, South Africa. And uh, he had a couple of batches before, but we were the first batch in that location. So myself, my uh, dear friend Mufti Nu'man from N New York, and another friend of mine, Mufti Harith, rahimahullah, passed away recently. Right before my wedding, he passed away. Mm. So there was three of us, we did iftah over there, and upon completion, then I, uh, before how I came to America, now this is... Yeah, because we got to come to America, yeah. you got married, what you're doing now, and, yeah. I, and I can just imagine in mm -hmm. your mind when you were studying, you were studying with that vision of coming back to Canada, mm -hmm. coming back to North America, mm. because that's where you grew up as a, a young boy. So the dawah, the Islam, the deen, it's about coming back here and spreading that message. Mm -hmm. I don't see you with the vision of going to Saudi Arabia to spread that message. Exactly. So Dubai definitely would not fit into exactly. your schedule. Exactly. It was always the verse of the Quran that was spinning in my head. وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَا مِنْ رَسُولٍ إِلَّا بِلِسَانِ قَوْمِهِ لِيُبَيِّنَ لَهُمْ Allah states that we have not sent any messengers for the benefit of the audience. Of course, the Sheikh knows. Uh, except that we sent the messengers who spoke the language, the language of the people. Of them of the people. So not just the, the exact language, but the slang, the dialect, the understanding, the lifestyle, the, the lifestyle of, of the people who they were sent to. So it, it only made sense for me to come back to either Canada or here. Mm -hmm. But what chose, uh, what made me choose Miami was I always came back so to America. from South Africa, you came straight to Miami? Uh, I was in Atlanta first, but yeah. there's a little, a little small story behind that. Uh -huh. What happened is uh, while I was studying in South Africa, every year I would come back home, I would go to lead Taraweeh in different states in America. Okay. Because okay. my cousin, who is also a Hafiz, who is, uh, he's, he lives in Atlanta, Georgia, he would go with me. He was my Taraweeh partner. Mm -hmm. And his mom, which is my maternal aunt, and my mom, they would come along with us. Mm -hmm. So we'd go explore different states. So the last state that I explored was Florida okay. and Orlando. But then he wanted to show me his hometown in Miami, Florida. 
And when I went there, I didn't really want to do anything religious or anything. My aunt was like, you know what, maybe you'll find a job here. I was like, no, nah, I don't want to do anything really. I just want to have fun. I want to enjoy mm -hmm. Miami, South Beach, Florida. You know what yes, I'm saying? Sir. I wanted to enjoy the Miami style. <laughs> but then I went to one of the masjids. I played basketball with the youth there. I had a Miami Heat jersey on with my name on the back mm -hmm. uh, and LeBron's number. <laughs> and the kids were blown away because I, I'm a Canadian who's here um, you know, in Miami with the Miami Heat jersey on. And then the next day, one of the brothers of the masjid found out somehow that I'm becoming a mufti and he asked me to do a talk over there. Mm -hmm. And I did a talk and the youth were like, they were confused. They're like, word, this guy's playing basketball with us one day, schooling us on the court. And then now he's doing a lecture and they liked me. And I liked that they liked me and I built a little connection with them. Mm -hmm. And subhanAllah, as soon as I studied, uh, I finished my studies in, of IFTA in South Africa, I moved to uh, here. Right? Interesting. I, I had my aunt living in Atlanta. So while I was waiting for my visa to come in, I taught Hivd in Atlanta for a little while. And then as, so, as soon as I got my visa to be here, mm -hmm. I moved to Miami, Florida. And uh, from Miami, Florida, I was in Kendall for two years. And then after the Kendall, uh, I moved over here. And subhanAllah, the way I moved over here, Allah had it all planned. My wife was, was living here got married Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed me with a, a, a very beautiful marriage and then you know my parents came my grandpa every all of my family got reunited together over here in South Florida that was the recent uh, you know of what I'm doing here in IFSF that is unique and I think that's very motivational because you know as a mom's boy I love that I love that mom's mm -hmm. boy <laughs> I may have to put that as a little theme on this program mm -hmm. because that was such an interesting lesson motivation for moms and for sons and children mm -hmm.